Let's go. I'm gonna call it slightly late because he kicked off before we got straight to it. Come on, Rico. Come on, Rico. It's the last game of the day. It's all right, man. You've done great. It's all right. How about this? Falcons on Falcons to finish the game. Yeah, who would have thought the Chiefs wouldn't be here in the finals? I think ah, that defense is tough. That Falcons defense is tough. Yeah, a lot of speed. And it's funny, it's the speed. It's not in the secondary. It's really in that front seven. Not that they're slow in the secondary, but they're above average on that D-line and linebacker core. Let's crown the inaugural, the first ever. Only one person can be the first ever DreamHack champion. Will it be Clef the God or Turnaround? First down and 10 to kick off this championship game. Important for Clef to open up this game strong. Ball and the pressure right in the middle. For turnaround. Vic Beasley. What a way to start the game if you're a turnaround. Big early. You get Clef into a second and 21. How's he going to respond here? Second and 21. Play action pass for Clef. On that right side, he's gonna take what he can underneath with Austin Oper takes a big hit at the 20 yard line, but he'll get six back on second down. You want, you, you want to get hammered at home for those old enough to drink. Take a shot anytime, turn around, lands a hit stick or a strip ball tackle. He's all over the place. Third and 15 now for Clef. They look underneath once more. It's Julio. Ooh, we'll that stop time. and go. Strip though. And how about 11 yards and now fourth down, our first big play of the game. You know Clef's going for it on fourth and four. I think a lot of people thought it was going to be easier for him to march down this field in this first drive and not see a fourth down that quickly. This is big. If this is Clef, though, you've worked yourself into a fourth and manageable after taking the sack on first down. Big plays early in the championship game of DreamHack. And now Clef the God. Ridley in motion from right to left, too wide on the right side. Freeman on the left hip. Up Matt Ryan. Play action pass on fourth and four. Waiting, looking. Oh, no. Downfield has him. And that who else but Julio Jones to pick up the first down in plus territory. How about the poise of Clef the God? You sack him early, you get him into an early fourth down. Stays in the pocket, waits for the deep crossing route and throws a laser. One thing you're not going to have to worry about is Clef getting nervous at the moment being too big for him. He's always going to keep fighting. And a big part of that, he comes from a competitive background. This is a young man who's played football through the college level. He comes from a football family. He coaches for football right now. He's used to competing on all sorts of levels. Here he goes Very poised. 10 down the middle of the field. Julio Jones once again carving up this turnaround defense. I'm not going to say that's twice that Julio's been rather a little bit more open than you'd like to see him in this kind of championship game. Gun, gun, gun! Gun, gun! Wait! How about this? An early red zone opportunity for Clef. 18 yards out. Wait! Hey, South! First down and 10. Jones coming to motion, play action pass for Clef. He's got a lot of time. He's got to throw this ball away. Good coverage downfield. It's, it's so tough to get anything going in the red zone. I think you got to be a little nervous if you're Clef here just because you know he has leveled some hit sticks and caused some strips and everything like that. You want to try to throw this ball in the end zone without being... Here comes the strip animation. Doesn't get it there. Devontae Freeman to the 10 yard line, third and short RG. Another big play right here, just because if Clef wasn't able to pick up this first down, it's gonna be hard for him to pass up on those points. This very well could be the play that determines if he takes three. Or he keeps the drive alive for seven. Look at Freeman. Going for seven. Boy, how good has Clef been running that fullback dive out of the strong eye close? 
has been very efficient. I, I, I've been impressed with these guys running that fullback dive and their ability to make sure they get through the right running lane. Pick up those yards. Go back that one more time. Good pressure off the edge to stop Devontae Freeman at the two-yard line. Tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. Big shout out to everybody who's in the chat all weekend long. Appreciate all the support from everybody out there. Everybody who's hung around here at DreamHack. Nick Mazesco, RG, Rico Williams, the championship game of the inaugural DreamHack Madden Tournament. Cleft the God and turnaround. Fullback dive. And he's going to sneak into the end zone. The first touchdown of the championship game goes to the man known as Cleft the God. He's just been handling business all tournament long. We've talked about it. Came in with such high expectations and has been able to deliver on those expectations. And he's doing his community, the Church of Madden, his fam back home. Needed Gaiman and Dub Dot Dubby. They got to be proud because this man's been a beast on the sticks all weekend long. You got to feel like Wu Sa if you're Clef. Happy to put that first seven on the board. You know that turnaround wants to run the ball, so you're going to have your opportunities. Way to start the game off. You turn around, setting his audibles right there, using that audibles on the fly mechanic. If that's a mechanic, that if you play Madden and you're not using this audibles on the fly mechanic, you are doing it wrong. Once you enter the formation, simply press the left trigger. It's going to let you select which audible do you want to sub out. Then you can scroll through the formation and pick what play you want to put in that audible slot. Very good mechanic that allows you to be as efficient as possible when audible and at the line of scrimmage. You don't, if you're not using that, you better incorporate it. Could be wrong. I, I, if I remember correctly, audibles on the fly was added, I want to say it was middle of Madden 18. It was, it was a mid-game patch. Yeah, Postal, I, that was a feature. I, it was, Big it used to be in Madden back on the PS2 days, one of my favorite features. Not only because it lets you set your audibles, but it lets you change your game plan throughout the game. Say you have your preset audibles that you like at the start of the game, but then if you get to a point where, hey, I'm up and I need a run, you can then fill your audibles with a variety of different run plays. This really helps you be agile with your game plan in this division. Young man's run game is serious, and they're telling me that he doesn't even play much. He doesn't go in for the club championship. Can you imagine what this young man may look like when he gets involved with the MCS next year and he's building his own team? Imagine him with like a Barry Sanders or one of those 98 overall Joe Mixons. I think he'll be something serious. <laughs> Definitely will be some serious. And shout out to our guy, some serious. He's in the chat. He, Absolutely. He's another potential rookie of the year candidate. Oh. I bet Chris, he would have been in the running, but Kratobin winning the belt. Hey, let's go. Hey, South. Probably would have gave him the edge, but one of my favorite players to watch this year. Great personality, great person, awesome Madden player, some serious. Oh, there's another hit. He only hits. I'm jealous. How often he, this guy gets hit sticks and strips? I have a question I just realized. Huh? Pavin doesn't have a shot at Rookie of the Year? No, Pavin's not a rookie. This was his first year making one. Uh uh no, Which one did he make? Madden one? 18, he was the, um, the Raiders Club champion. Oh, you're right. You're so right. What is it? Apologize, Pavin. Good one. Yeah, I got you. Third and three now for Clef. What a start for turnaround. One play, one touchdown. Clef looking to regain the lead. Looking downfield, a little corner oh. route. Drop it in the bucket. Great play. Calvin Ridley. Hey, let's go. And you can just see, look at the, the, the player cams on screen. Hey, Both of those players hey, locked in, hey, focused. Hand off to Freeman right in the middle. Big oh, gas. He's got Big gas. One to B. A little stop and go. He's going to pick up a chunk of yards inside the 10 to the 9 yard line. Clef showing off a little stick work of his own on the ground. Getting icky, and we're probably going to go to the second quarter with a tie ball game. I told you this was going to be a good one, boys. What a way to start the championship game here of the Dream Hack Madden cha hey, hey, Championship. Hey, hey, he even snapped the ball, he called a play. Take it to the second. 7-7. Seven, seven. We got ourselves a ball game. It's everything we wanted it to be in the end zone. Big shout out, by the way, one more time. 
right, right. to our sponsor, Chipotle. They have been awesome helping put hey, wait, wait. all of us on here at DreamHack. Hey, Tuesday, Tuesday, Send Tuesday. me burritos. Hey, Tuesday, Tuesday, seven, Tuesday. seven, but Clev nine yards out. He's going to look to throw the ball here. Stepping up. High pass. Austin Hooper gives it to the big tight end. Touchdown for Clef. He goes right back down and reclaims the lead. I've just been so impressed with his ability to respond. It feels like any time anyone tries to take some of the momentum from Clef or respond to him, he's just always got the answer time and time again. Yeah, after that big run he let up, a lot of people would have folded it, but then in their head still, he was able to clear that, march down the field, put up another seven. Now turn around. He's got to come back out of the field. It's not really in an offensive rhythm. He's only run one play, but it went 75 yards to the house. Can he do it again? Gun, gun. Here he's hey, in that hey, strong gun, eye close. Hey, hey, gun, gun. There we go. One play is all it took to turn around and put seven on the board. He's going to try to throw it here, and he throws it to the swing. Boy, we didn't see that at all in his first two games. Quick throw to Tevin Coleman, picks up four. I like that play, too, because it's a way, obviously, he's very successful when he gets the ball in Tevin Coleman's hand. He's very sticky with him, but he found a different way to get the ball in one of his playmakers' hands other than running the ball. He's able to mix it up and keep his opponent off balance. I really like that play call right there from turnaround. The more, the, more the more variety you have and being able to get the ball in the hands of these playmakers, the more efficient you're going to be. Now, you guys said Clef was going to have run defense. He was going to be able to adapt. That is tough. That was great defense. He was able to stop that from being a touchdown, but he's going to have to do something to slow this down. I mean, the bottom line is this young man is just sticky. You, you can have run defense, but you, you, you can't stop stick work. You, you, you're going against someone that can constantly find the one lane that's there and make use of it. And, you know, we talk about getting the, the, the amount of yards that you should on run plays. So often people don't use run plays to their fullest potential. It feels like turnaround always gets the full potential of the run. Boy, how scary must it be to see the ball in one of Turnaround's players' hands in open space. Uh, it's so, his ability to get to open space, Nick, I, I know when I play and when I watch a lot of lesser skilled players play. Oh, bad read! Got bailed out but there. What I was saying is, I know when I watch a lot of normal people play the game, there's so many opportunities where they have a good run lane and they can take, you know, the ball for what should be a 25-yard game, but their stick work causes it to be, you know, a 5, 10, 15-yard game, not what you're seeing from turnaround. If, he, if there's 25 yards there of room, he's get, taking all of it. Run to the outside, Tevin Coleman. Very sticky. Big third and four here, though, boys. He has to keep up with Clef. You think he's running here, Rico? He has to. Look down at four. He's going to throw the ball here. Doesn't go to the swing. That X, he missed the tight end. There's nothing open. Oh, what a playmaker. Might be short. He's going to be short by a yard, but how about that late playmaker and read? And on fourth and one, no question for turnaround. I think Clef was happy that he passed that ball. He knew exactly what to do. He was playing great defense, just a playmaker. He had the tight end open early. Mr. Reed, I think he got a little nervous because the user defender was kind of in the vicinity. But I think if he threw it early, he had the first down. It's going to be close. Hold the door. Oh, I think he held it. He got held up. We're yep. Stopped him. What a stop. What a stop by the interior of Clef's defense. Stood wow. him up. That play took so long to develop. As we always said, there. Loud clef pull that guy, I think he has the first Great down. Great stop. If you're Clef, you got to think this is ball game. If I can put up another seven here against the runner, now you're in complete control. You see Dub Dot Dubby in the chat saying physical football. And if there's one thing those need at gaming boys preach when they're on the virtual gridiron, it's playing physical. Hey, wait, wait. 21. Second and three. Trips tight end for Clef on offense with the lead. Dropping back. Underneath, picks up a first down. Good tackling once again. Get up. Yeah, it takes his first time out of the half. If you're Clef, you, you, gotta, you gotta be very aware of turnarounds, hit stick and strip ball ability. You, you might wanna start, you know, covering the ball or going down with the hat, using that give up mechanic. 
if he gets close. Because you, you have, you're moving the ball fine. But you got to watch out for those hits. And here's the question going through the rest of this game. If turnaround's going to stay in this game, he's got to find a way to play some, like that play right there, play some good defense because, as I said, he was gifted a lot of easy interceptions down the field in those two games. He hasn't really had to play some good user defense in the, in the secondary. I know Clef has to be terrified every time he completes that ball oh. and running it like you said. It seems like he's getting a good hit or a good strip animation every single play. And Clef, some of the time, he is, he is able to hit that RB button. We've seen him do it in this tournament several times. But there's also times he doesn't even have time to do it. Turnaround's clicking on so quickly. Getting his defenders in position to make those plays. But Clef's still in control of this game and still marching. Under the two-minute warning in the first half, 14-7, Clef on top. Turnaround will get the ball to start the second half. First and ten for Clef. Get up! Back to pass, Ryan. He's gonna look. That's tight user coverage. That, that's where Turnaround needs to make a play because that was not a great read. It was just a better play by Julio. So it's Julio Jones and in Madden, when those receivers have a step on the defender and they get their hands on the ball, having that positional advantage is going to increase their chance of making the catch. That's what you saw from Julio right there. First down at 10. 20, 20. Three wide set. Four. Cleft the gun. Just in plus territory at the 42-yard line. Look at him use all this clock. The savvy veteran. Looking for that 12-5. Looking for that tournament title. Good user on the crossing route. He'll dump it off underneath. Oh. Wolf, the lumber. This is good stick work. He's but making the, it work for everything. But the stick work hasn't saved him yet. Clef has been winning the chess match, being able to find these guys in space. If you pick up first downs, if you're turnaround, are you sitting there in this game? I know you're down seven. Are you sitting there, Rico, going? Eventually, one of these is going to go my way. I'm eventually going to get a fumble. You have to think so, because that's his whole game plan. Is I'm going to strip, I'm going to get those hit sticks, I'm going to win the turnover battle. So you just got to keep going with what got you here. Don't change your game now. Third and three. Look into the corner route. Got him. Missed on that hit stick. And Ridley, he's going to dance down the sideline looking like a circus act. Tightrope walk into the end zone to a two score lead. Yabba dabba do. I call that the Fred Flintstone swag when you can tiptoe on the sideline, redirect yourself into locomotion, get in for six. And call Cleft the surgeon because he's surgical right now the way he's moving this ball down the field. 38 seconds. You know he likes to run. And we see we can score in one play though, but. Do you try to take it in here into the half and just be happy since you're getting the ball back, or you press your luck? You gotta press a little bit, but does he have an offense to get that big chunk of yards? And you don't want to turn it over. Well, out. you see him, he went to this Falcon trio. This is where he likes to pass the ball there out of him. There's a good thought for him early on for turnaround. Ooh, I'm surprised he, he called the timeout there. I, I would have been more interested to save that for maybe a, a field goal try. Down two scores, 21 to 7, 32 seconds remaining in the first half. Staying in that Falcon trio. Underneath, that's Austin Hooper. And he knows, he knows how hard he hits. He's going to get down, make sure there's no fumble. This clock's ticking. See how Turnaround handles this situation. High pressure situation right here at the end of the half. Play action. Wheel route, get Coleman. Rounds. Wow, that was huge what getting out of hit. bounds there. Does he take the field goal here? Or does he take a shot? He's taking another shot. This could be risky. You gotta go end zone only. He's gonna throw a high ball to Julio. End zone or bust. 11. On. First and 10. Coleman in motion. Play action pass. Pressure off the Julio's edge picked doubled. up. Just gotta throw that ball away. There was that double coverage for you, Rico. Hey. He did the right thing on offense to look for it. They did the right thing on defense. You throw it away, you take your three. To cut it back to an 11-point game. The kick is up. It is good. Two seconds ready in the first half. It's 21 to 10. Just 
Would kick this down the field and get into halftime. Turnaround will get the ball to start the second half. Just like that, 10 minutes remain in game. It's a two score ball game. Clef on top. This drive, RG, it's a big one. Yeah, turn around. Gonna have to get some offense right here. Make this a one possession ball game, even if it's three points. You don't want to come away on this drive empty handed. Clef already has plenty of momentum. Should be a huge momentum infusion for Clef if he could get this ball back. Still up two possessions. 21 to 10, the score. First down, handoff. Freeman right up the middle. Good block it up front. Give him 11, give him a first down. Hurrying back to the line, trying to keep Clef on his heels. All right, give it to Freeman one more time. This time, Clef says, no thank you, sir. That's it, baby. Second and 11. Break it down for us. You don't want to be there when you're running offense. You need to pick up more yards on the first down in order to make it easier on you. Now, you put yourself in an uncomfortable position, and this is where Clef can make a play. Play action pass. He's going to throw for it. Ryan waiting, looking, going down the middle of the field. Yeah. Yeah. An overthrow, and now Clef in control. He's looking down the field. That's Des Trufant with the interception. Rico said it. This is where this is where you can you know make a mistake. It's it's not his game plan. He's obviously comfortable in that Falcon trio, but he'd obviously much rather be in that strong formation, running the ball. And if you're Clef right now. You can put together a long scoring drive. It's going to be pretty close to GG's in the chat. Man. And as a runner, you know, when you realize that you threw the pick and these are the things getting outside of your game that wound up costing you, you got to look back like, man, I let this opportunity get away. 21 10 the score. Clef. Everything going his way so far. And RG, here's the, the interesting part about Clef's game. It's not particularly flashy, but it is efficient. You don't sit back and go, wow, look at that big play, that big play. I mean, turn around playing a flashy game with the stick work, but Clef, he's just methodical. He makes the right reads, and he scores quickly and efficiently. And there he shows off a little spin move with Devontae Freeman, who's going to break a tackle. You got a spin move, I got a spin move. It, it's really just execution. When it, when it comes down to execution in this tournament, uh, Clef has been biblical, just coming through time and time again, making the plays, finding the open man, not making mistakes, not beating himself, playing like a true champion. Now first and goal for Clef the God here in the championship game. We're giving away $12,500 to the winner. $25,000 prize pool from DreamHack Dallas. Ridley in the slot, Jones wide left, Freeman in the backfield. And look at Clef, the veteran move. Use all that clock. Hands it to Freeman. He'll fight forward to the six yard line. Did you see turnaround? He tried his hardest to shoot that gap and get in there to land one of those hip sticks, but the stretch just caught him off guard, wasn't able to do it. And it's always tough, you know, no matter what happens here, whether it's three for a 14-point game or seven, which makes it really out of control, we know that he does not want to pass. So trying to come back, trying to fight back here, it's going to be a completely uphill battle. Yeah, it's definitely going to be difficult. One thing to his credit is that hip stick could very well keep him in this game just because anytime Clef runs the ball to milk this clock, it's going to be a little risky because he got to deal with it, and there he was, got himself in position to land the hit. Just didn't get the animation. And that, this is a big play here for a turnaround. You get a stop, force him to kick a field goal. It's still a two-score game. You can't let him into the end zone, though. Hey, wait, wait. Third and exactly goal. Right, Nick. Does Clef throw this ball? Look for Julio. Not a lot of defenders on the left side of the field. Gun, gun, gun. Just continuing to let that clock tick. Hey, hey, gun, gun. The clock down under five seconds. Minute 34 and counting in the third quarter. Dropping back to pass. Waiting. Looking. 
Does he have anything? He doesn't. He'll take the sack. I actually like him taking the sack. Then. Yeah, I love it. I, you saw I was terrified that he was going to throw that ball and give turnaround a chance to get a pick, tip or anything like that, and clean, and change the, the momentum. Clock. Yeah, stop the clock and everything. Exactly. Even taking the sack over throwing the ball away to keep that clock moving. Just very intelligent play right there from Clef. And just playing on such a high level. And he has a high Madden IQ, but he also has a very high football IQ. And he's been using it to his benefit all season long. Turn around, even though he threw that pick with a field goal here. He's still very much in this ball game. Plenty of time left, but he's got to find a way to get down the field quicker than I think his ball control rushing offense will allow. Yeah, this is a, this is a, one of those situations you gotta uh, put up a tutty. Boy, wait, wait for this. Rico's got his. I'm very proud of the joke I'm about to make. Though. Oh, what's going on? Come, Come on, on, Rico. Rico. Don't leave us hanging. Don't do that. He has to win the battle of second down. You can't have you can't be a running offense and put yourself was, in second and long it was, it situations. It was worth the wait. It was because worth the wait. You have to win that second down battle. If he finds himself in second and eight, second and nine, he winds up having to go to that passing offense, which he doesn't feel comfortable with, throws the picks, and that's how Clef is taking over this game. He's gonna throw it on first down. Into the wheel. Spin move. He's got Tavin Coleman in space. Great read there. Great read. Boy. Goes. That's a big chunk. That's a momentum. That, that's the type of momentum you need right now. If you turn around a quick scoring drive, put this pressure right back on Clef. They have to convert on offense. Oh, no. We got three. Three down. Three down. I would have rather him throw to Julio up the sidelines one-on-one -on -one than throw that ball because that very easily could have been a pick going the other way. What about this championship plate that they, they brought out for the winner, huh? It's a little trophy. Play action pass. Pressure down goes Ryan Dion Jones on the blitz. And now a third and long. Something, something second down is important. <laughs> third and 18. So it should be the final play of the third quarter. He says as there's one second left on the clock. Great call, Nick. Good call. That's big defense right here, and this game just slowly slipping through turnaround fingers. This entire drive has shown how much respect he has for Clef. He didn't even try to run the ball. He went away completely from everything that's gotten him this championship game. The action pass, fourth and long. This actually is the final play of the third quarter. He's going for it. Oh! All game, and no, oh, and Clef stopped him. And he goes for the swat. Bats it out of his hands, fours up in the chat. It's a beautiful play, RG, because not only does the swap break it up, but a punt, a, a pick there is basically a punt. He wants the field position at the 38-yard line. And that's that football IQ we talk about with Clef. And unfortunately for turnaround, Clef, this is exactly where you want to be. You're up two touchdowns already. You're already in field goal range, and we talk about this all the time, but this is one of those situations. Just run the ball three times, take as much time off the clock as possible. If you break a big one, great. If not, no big deal. You take away that clock, go up three possessions, and pretty much need a miracle at that point for turnaround to come back and win this game. The buzzsaw that is Clef the God. If you're turnaround, the one thing you have going for you right here, like I said, is that strip ball and that hit stick mechanic that you've been so efficient with. If there was ever a time that you needed to force a fumble, this is it. There's the strip, missed it. First down. That was tough. He thought he had it there. Everybody, that... He's been making a living on those trips and those hit sticks. When he hasn't got, he hasn't gotten any of them and hasn't been able to establish his run game outside of that first run. And, and Rico, the risk with going with those strips and hit sticks is they can result in more broken tackles. And you saw right there what should have probably been a three-yard game turns more into a 10-yard game because of the strip ball broken tackle. And, and looking at the replay, the work. Uh, it did look like Cleft the God, he used that cover ball function as, as the strip was coming just to just to give himself a little extra security from the strip mechanic. Yeah, and I believe he, we haven't seen him do any spins or anything like that. He could be on that conservative ball carrier as well. And again, that's that high football IQ that we've come to see and expect from Cleft the God. Into the end zone. Slam the door. Cleft feeling that 12-5 in his pocket. Drinks on Cleft. 
By the way, did you notice there wasn't even a second down for any of those? <laughs> he kept getting the first, kept getting the first on first down. So is the second down analysis, if you can stay away from having second downs, you're going to win the game? Absolutely. <laughs> Obviously. That was know. Mr. Prolific Pete over there. Well, what if you don't have second downs because you're throwing picks on first down? Your move. That's when you have your strip animation, your head sticks, and you try to make a living with that. Oh, By the way, we well, got to say it one more time. How much fun has it been being out here at DreamHack, calling three days of competitive Madden in the month of May, end of May, beginning of June? Doesn't get better than this. It's been a great time catching up with all the guys from the community, seeing some old school players, some of the new school players that we've come to love, and it's been, been a great time, man. Riddle me this. Down 14, a lot more time left. He comes out passing on first down. Now down 21, a lot less time. He runs on first down. Trying to catch him off guard. You know, one thing we haven't talked about at all is, you got to remember, this guy Clef was a guy that was a few MCS points away from making that Madden ball and having an insane season. And you know, that had a really sting. I mean, he missed out on some serious money not being able to make that mana ball. I believe, like, the minimum you can make was, like, five grand or, right. you know, something like that. And um, for him to, you know, fight through that adversity and, you know, put that behind him and come out here and likely get this $12,500, that just says a lot about his character and his willingness to fight and not feel bad for himself. And, Oh. He's reaping the benefits oh. of that mentality. Did Kevin Coleman just ag down the field? 21! A little, too little, too late. He's not even getting this off before the two-minute warning. 21-point game. For the people in the chat, for the people out here at DreamHack who are thinking, Clef's going to dominate it. You got exactly that. He played a, another perfect game. And, and Rico, you're talking about next year. I mean, look out for Clef the God, because if he's playing at high, as high a level as he is right now, he could win multiple bouts next year. You got to think about it. He, him and Drini are the only people that ended their season on a win. And they're riding into the sunset, getting ready for Madden 20. With him now being a part of Needy Gaming and working with everybody, you got to feel like the sky's the limit. Second out of 10. Back in the end zone. Over Julio, no dice. Well, again, and Clev came into this season with high expectations, and he delivered. He won that Buccaneers Club Championship, made it to the second round of that tournament, and like I said, he was just a few MCS points away from making that Madden ball. That's literally probably one additional win within the Madden Classic, uh, get out of one online elimination. He, he was right there on the cusp. And to just continue to play the game, continue to fight, just very admirable. What a nice touchdown there for a turnaround to cut it back to 15 points. Got to give one other shout out. Big shout out to our production team behind the scenes. The first ever Madden tournament they have run, and it has gotten the admin team and the production team here has been top notch. Rico, we've worked for a lot of people. They they have knocked it out of the park. Absolutely. To think about it, the fact that they're from Sweden and they came here and were able to deal with language, everything. It's the game. First class production. If I had to go to Sweden, it'd be a little tough for me. Oh, man. <laughs> that'd, be a, that'd be a reality series in itself. Can we make that happen? I want Rico at, at, at uh, DreamHack Summer. It, it, only work, it, it only works if the two of you go. <laughs> Sweden wouldn't be ready. I, I, I know we've, we've talked about some of his play calling and everything like that, but Turnaround still needs to hold his head high. Oh, yeah. He has gone through a glitany of great players, got here, made $7,500, and made a name for himself so that next year, people are going to put some respect on him. Yeah, I, I think to be able to come here, and again, to everybody out there, big shout-out to all the players who took time out of their lives to come here to Dallas and make this a, a, a real tournament with, with a, a huge 96-person field. If you're turnaround, you're you're walking away from this. You're disappointed you didn't win it because you were so close, but you're still walking away with 7,500 bucks, which makes this entire weekend yeah. just so much better. And I, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was worried. Would, would, would you be able to fill a big bracket like that this okay, late what? in the match? And not only did they fill it, they had tons of people on the waiting list. So that just shows the interest level is there. And you see Clef clapping because he knows. By the way, 
How about Kratobin was on that waiting list? Ends up walking away with money. With the 2,500, as you see, Clef bend the knee. Get up! This is not no... the first time you're going to see Clef the God win a tournament. This is not the last time because this is this is a force to be reckoned with. The knees are on the ground. The GGs are in the chat. Clef the God is your inaugural DreamHack Madden champion, and what a performance! By Clef the God. Yeah, he really put it together on both sides of the ball. He pretty much played a perfect tournament all the way throughout. Everything that was put in front of him, he handled. Oh, look at him. Feet. How much does this mean to him? Away. It means everything to him. He's validating himself. Everybody wanted him to win a lot of tournaments. He finally got this one. There were a lot of people out here, and he'll forever be known as the initial Madden DreamHack champ. How do you think Dubby's feeling back home? Oh, like a proud papa. I mean, that, what? Look at that smile. That's all genuine. Man, we're gonna. What a way to end the tournament. I think we're gonna get Clef back here and give him a little interview. We gotta present him for this championship. Like, I know I'm right down the big screen. It looks like a hole in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> but Clef, the god, is. I mean, and again, a big tip of the cap to turn around. I mean, what a performance. A guy. How many people were saying that turnaround was gonna be in the final of Draven with 96 people? Nobody. There is no shame in placing second out of 96. Look at Clef tapping up his boys right there. He's pumped up and he deserves to be. He put in a lot of hard work. And like we said, this was a guy that fought through adversity. He fell short of the Madden ball. He didn't feel sorry for himself. He continued to work hard. He continued to believe in himself. And because of that, he's walking away $12,500 richer. And he's going to walk away with the title as the first ever DreamHack Madden champion. I think this solves our number five debate as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, making his way over to join us, none other than Clev the God, our 2019 DreamHack Madden Champion. All right, Nick, can you please do the honors in presenting Clef? Clef, uh, bring that mic down. We gotta hear from you before we give you the play. We gotta ask, how, do you, how are you feeling? I know it's been a a, a long season, a season that uh, you were looking for that marquee win, and you come out here to DreamHack, 96 people, you outlast them in three days, and you're going home with 12-5 in this trophy. Man, I feel amazing, man. It's just a product of hard work and just staying staying patient this year. I feel like I got cheated out of the Madden Bowl. Should have been there point wise, but things didn't go my way. But just to, just to have this one big win to fall back on and have some momentum to man in 20 is just, it's huge. Clef, I, I think one thing that I admire about you is you not only show up to these tournaments, but you're a big part of the community. You stream often. Um, can you just let the people know out there if, if they want to follow you and follow your journey, where can they check you out? What's the Twitch stream, the Twitter? Wh where can they find you? I'm at Clef the, at Clef the God everywhere on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. So follow me there, and I'm going to keep grinding this. I'm going to keep doing it. Clef, we saw you play excellent on both sides of the ball. We really didn't see you have trouble throughout here. Do you feel like you had your A game and this is the best you've been at? Yeah, I feel like this is the best I ever played. It's just it's just being more relaxed and knowing I, I belong here. Like this isn't this isn't by accident that I'm here. I put the work in, I put the time in. I just I came out here and I was relaxed and I played my best matter. And how about your needed gaming team? Oh yeah, shout out, needed, shout out to Needed. Shout out to Needed, shout out to W, Vilma, Books. Skimbo, shout out to LOB, shout out to Church of Madden, shout out to all my bros, shout out to everybody supporting me, shout out to everybody back home. All right, I, you said you were hungry, you boy? said you wanted to eat. I'm, I'm ready. I'm it's ready. Eat a plate for that. Pretty good plate for you. Congratulations. Great win, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, our 2019 Madden Dream Hack champion, I'm Rico Williams, Nick Mazesco, RG. We'd like to thank Chipotle, our sponsor, EA Madden, the production guys. You were absolutely amazing. Everybody who hung in with us in the chat all weekend, we love you guys. Fellas, 